Hey guys, welcome back to Orms TV. Now, over the last couple of weeks, we've had a look at the three pillars of exposure, um, namely your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. And today, we are going to take all three of those elements, put them together, show you how they work, and how they impact on each other in terms of generating a correct exposure. Come join us for that. So firstly, a quick recap of our previous episodes. So aperture is the lens opening in the front of your camera, and that dictates the amount of light that reaches your sensor. Your shutter speed is the duration for which your shutter remains open and thereby controls the duration for which light hits your sensor. ISO, in its simplest form, is the sensitivity of your sensor to that light that hits it. Now, these three elements work together to give you your exposure value, and you cannot manipulate one of them without it having some sort of impact on one or both of the other elements of your exposure. And all three of these elements have to work together and have to be adjusted together to generate the exposure value that you wish to achieve within your image. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change the set here a little bit, and we're gonna show you visually how exactly the exposure triangle works to generate an exposure that you would like to achieve within an image. Okay, guys, so what we're gonna show you is how these three pillars of exposure work together. So how your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO work together to give you your exposure value. So. What you'll see here is that we have our camera trained at some other cameras, and we are currently shooting at a shutter speed of 1 over 500, an aperture of 1.4, and an ISO of 200. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick it off by essentially speeding up the shutter speed, so increasing it, so making your shutter open and close faster. So we are going to move it two stops, and that is going to darken your exposure. So we are going from 500 all the way up to a shutter speed of 1 over 2000. Okay, so now you see the image has gone significantly darker, and we are now going to have to compensate for this, unless you want a darker image. Um, but let's assume you want relatively correct exposure. We are now going to compensate for this by increasing the ISO, so making your sensor more sensitive to light. So we are going to bring up our ISO, and we are going to move the ISO two stops up. So that is going to put us at an ISO of 800. Okay, so there we are. So the ISO is now 800 and you see immediately we have the exact same exposure as what we had when the shutter speed was at 1 over 500. So the principle here is, is that adjusting one element by a given number of stops um, and then adjusting another element in an opposite direction with the same number of stops will yield the exact same exposure value. And this is true whether you are working with your um, shutter speed or aperture or ISO, as we have just shown you. So let's do another one. Um, let's um, do the aperture. So we are currently at an aperture of um, 1.4. So what I'm going to do is close the aperture down um, three stops. Yeah, let's go down three stops. So I'm going to go from an aperture of 1.4 to an aperture of f4. So now you'll know from our aperture videos that that means that the aperture is closing down, so the opening in the lens is getting smaller the higher that number is. So we are going to move to an aperture of f4. So you'll see the image gets significantly darker, and we are now at f4, and we are underexposing quite severely. Now we are going to compensate for this by reducing the shutter speed, so allowing the shutter to stay open for a longer period of time. So we are going to move the shutter speed also three stops, so we're going to go from 2000 and we are going to go down to 1 over 250 and that should again bring us back to the exact same exposure value. And that is absolutely perfect. So now we can demonstrate this in the opposite direction as well. So overexposing and then bringing 
your values down again. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to increase the ISO, so make the, sh um, the sensor even more sensitive to the light that's coming through, and I'm going to increase the ISO by three stops. So I'm going to go from an ISO of 800 all the way up to an ISO of 6400. So let's do that now and you'll see what that looks like. So we're going to go all the way through it. So 6400 is going to give us that value and you'll see the image is severely overexposed. Um, now again, let's assume that we want to get back to the exact same exposure value that we had before moving the ISO up. So what I'm going to do now is close down the aperture even further, so make the opening in the lens even smaller, thereby allowing less light through. And I'm going to move the aperture from an f-stop of f4, and I'm going to close it down to f11, and that should bring us back to the exact same exposure value that we had. So let's do that. So we're going to go all the way down to f11, and just like that we have the same exposure again and that is how these elements interact with each other. Well guys thank you very much for joining us for that video on the exposure triangle. As always if you enjoyed that please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We love hearing from you guys and join us next time.